planning at UW Milwaukee. Um, Charles mentioned the issue of perceptions of crime, and you'll hear more about that in this study. What we were doing was targeting a bicycle intervention. So putting people on bikes and seeing how their perceptions changed before and then after doing a summer of biking. So um, we called it the Biking for Health study because it was done with the Medical College of Wisconsin. And ultimately the purpose was to try to increase the health of people through biking. So our research question was, can this 12-week intervention during the summer reduce barriers to bicycling among participants in low-income Latino, Latino and black communities? Our team included researchers as well as community members with community organizations who helped reach out and recruit participants with us, and then the Wisconsin Bicycle Federation who helped lead bicycle rides. The communities that we studied were a predominantly black neighborhood on the north side of Milwaukee. That's a black population concentration. On the south side, Latino concentration. And the community center there was the heart of our study uh, area on the south side. Overall, we had 38 participants who started the study. Uh, they were all overweight to some extent, and we wanted to target that particular population so that uh, we could see if there was health benefit. Uh, Latino and black communities, they were almost all lower income participants. Interestingly, most of the people who participated in the study were female. We only had about five male participants in the group. So these results probably apply mostly to female uh, riders. We had an intervention and a control group. So we wanted to see if the people who participated in the bike rides, the intervention group, had different outcomes from a group that we collected data from but didn't have a chance to actually do the intervention. The intervention itself was done in the summer of 2015. It included giving people a free bicycle at the very beginning of the summer and basic bicycle instruction. And then we had scheduled 10 guided bicycle rides uh, as groups that would ride in each community. And on the south side, they completed just about all 10, they completed nine of the 10 bike rides. On the north side, there was a difficult time scheduling some of the people who were participants, and so there were only three bike rides that actually were done. We took some of the people who were in the intervention group and moved them to the control group if they didn't actually participate as much in the intervention. So we evaluated at the baseline time, so just before the intervention started, at 12 weeks, just at the end of the intervention, and then also collected data at week 20. So eight weeks afterwards, did the effects of the intervention continue uh, after into the fall? We looked at a couple of different biometric tests. We also did a step test, and then what I'll mostly talk about is results from an attitude survey, in particular focused around what people perceived as barriers to biking. Now first with the step test, this is a way of measuring physical activity, or uh, their uh, physical fitness. These are comparisons versus the baseline time. So at 12 weeks, the intervention group did about 20 more steps in six minutes versus when they did it at the baseline time. So they got in better shape after 12 weeks, and actually that went down uh, by 20 weeks, as you might expect, for reasons because changed from summer to fall and the weather wasn't as good, uh, as well as people weren't doing their bicycle intervention as a group anymore. Uh, they, we compared the intervention group with the control group just to see if there was a significant difference. Though the intervention group was higher in terms of how much they increased their steps, it was not statistically significant. So statistical significance for all the researchers in the room. Uh, it's important uh, because we can't tell there's a big difference or not officially between the intervention and control. Uh, also, with the attitude survey, we gathered data through a barriers question. So we asked about 19 different barriers to bicycling, and if somebody answered that the barrier was somewhat significant, very significant, or so significant that it keeps me from riding, that was counted as a barrier. Another thing that we did with the evaluation, comparing over time, was to see if the barriers were reduced for each respondent. Did they say 
in one uh, data collection period at the beginning, it was very significant, but then it went down to not significant at all later on. So if the barrier was reduced, we noted that as well. So first of all, in terms of barriers, bad weather was the top one that was mentioned. This is Wisconsin, so it, it is not a shock to see that bad weather was a barrier. But some of the ones that Charles just mentioned were also very highly ranked. Not having a bicycle used, about three-fourths of the respondents said that that was a barrier to them. Not feeling safe from car traffic. And then fourth, not feeling safe from crime. That's what Charles mentioned, the perceptions of security. When we looked then at how people change their perceptions over time, the people who were in the intervention group are shown as the red bars. So red bars that are longer indicate that a greater percentage of the respondents reported a less significant barrier. So the perception of the barrier went down for more people where the red bar is longer. So um, statistically significant effects between the baseline and 12 weeks right after the intervention was done are highlighted here. These seven factors, including not having a bicycle, that's not surprising because the intervention respondents received a bicycle the first week of the intervention. Uh, but not feeling safe from car traffic, not feeling safe from crime, not knowing the best routes to use, those were all decreased significantly more among the intervention group than the control group, as well as being physically uncomfortable, not feeling healthy enough to bike, and not having other people to bike with. Now, did these perceptions of reduced barriers sustain over time? Well, some of them did, uh, but not everyone did, into 20 weeks. We still maintained the reduction in barrier of not feeling safe from car traffic, as well as not feeling safe from crime, uh, and then not feeling healthy enough to bike. So people were feeling healthier, feeling safer around car traffic, and then perceiving that their neighborhoods were actually safer in terms of crime. Uh, that's important as we consider bicycling as a tool to build community and reduce those perceptions of crime that are a barrier to biking. We talked with the participants, uh, the ride leaders did, and we gathered data in the survey uh, from open-ended responses, and they told us what they thought about uh, overcoming barriers over time. Uh, one person said, you know, after joining the study, it brought back the joy of being on a bike. Uh, I'm more comfortable riding the bike on the streets. So people had very positive perceptions who went through the intervention. We found some other lessons as well. We thought, we heard from many people saying the importance of family in their uh, opportunities to encourage biking and participate in bicycling. So my husband encouraged me to bicycle or I wanna be able to go on bike rides with my children. As Charles mentioned, lack of access to working bike was a big barrier. Um, this pointed to a real need in the community for bike shops for opportunities to provide affordable and quality bikes as well as tune-ups. Uh, the Southside group actually visited a local bike shop as part of one of their rides. They could learn what it was like to go to a bike shop and be fit and get a bike that really worked for them. Um, and importantly, the intervention group developed what we call bike culture. So many of them rode during the week with their family uh, some of them started riding to the sessions rather than putting their bike on the car to bring it to a session. They were riding there. Uh, and they felt that it was really building community within their neighborhoods. So they had that reduced perception of crime. They felt better about the streets themselves. And they even called themselves the bike club. So there's, there's the picture of the Southside bike club. So with that, I want to move into our discussion time, and if you have questions for Charles and me about our research studies, uh, we also have some discussion questions if people don't have more uh, questions for us, but we, we believe there will probably be 